Though Robert Oppenheimer is best known as the father of the atomic bomb, his less dramatic yet the most cited scientific work is in the domain of quantum mechanics of molecules that forms the foundation of modern quantum chemistry. Almost a century back, in 1927, at the age of 23, Oppenheimer published a paper titled On the Quantum Theory of Molecules with his research advisor Max Born that outlined what is commonly referred to as the Born-Oppenheimer approximation. It remains, till today, a widely used tool in quantum chemistry to understand the structure and properties of molecules. To appreciate what the Born-Oppenheimer approximation brings to the table, let us first take a look at the Schrodinger equation of a molecule. We have to keep in mind that it is not just the electrons that are moving in a molecule. The nuclei are also in motion. The Hamiltonian operator of a molecule neglecting complicated spin orbit and other relativistic effects is as follows. Here, the indexes alpha and beta refer to the nuclei and i and j refer to the electrons. For example, in benzene molecule, which has 6 carbon and 6 hydrogen nuclei and the total of 42 electrons, alpha and beta runs from 1 to 12, while i and j runs from 1 to 42. We denote the set of nuclear coordinates by q alpha and that of the electronic coordinates by q i. The first and second terms in the Hamiltonian are the operators for kinetic energies of the electrons and the nuclei. The third, fourth and fifth terms are respectively the potential energies of the internuclear repulsion, electron nuclei attraction and interelectron repulsion. The wave functions and energies of the molecules can be found by solving the molecular Schrodinger equation. To emphasize the difficulty associated with solving this molecular Schrodinger equation, Ian Levin comments on his widely popular book on quantum chemistry that the molecular Hamiltonian is formidable enough to terrify any quantum chemist. Fortunately, the work of Oppenheimer and Born gave us a very accurate simplifying approximation that allows us to speed up and calculate the energy levels and wave functions of molecules that would otherwise be too difficult to calculate. The Born-Oppenheimer approximation assumes that the wave function of the atomic nuclei and the electrons in a molecule can be treated separately. This is because the nuclei are at least about 2000 times heavier than the electrons. So, they move much more slowly as compared to the electrons for the same amount of momentum. Classically speaking, during the time of a cycle of electronic motion, the change in the position of the nuclei is negligible. Therefore, to a good approximation as far as the electrons are concerned, we can consider the nuclei to be fixed at their respective positions while the electrons carry out their motion. Hence, in the first step of the Born-Oppenheimer approximation, the nuclear kinetic energy terms can be omitted from the molecular Hamiltonian to obtain the Schrodinger equations for the electronic motion. The internuclear distance r alpha beta appearing in the Hamiltonian are not variables, but are each fixed at some constant value depending on the nuclear configuration, that is, the positions of the nuclei. There are an infinite number of possible nuclear configurations and for each of these, we can solve the electronic Schrodinger equation to get a set of electronic wave functions and energies. The electronic wave functions and energies does depend parametrically on the nuclear coordinates. Assuming that we have solved the electronic Schrodinger equation, which by the way is not trivial, in the second step, we consider the nuclear motion. Since the electrons move much faster than the nuclei, when the nuclei change their configuration slightly, the electrons immediately adjust to the chains without requiring a relaxation time, with the electronic wave function and energy changing to values that depend on the new configuration. Thus, as the nuclei move or change configuration, 
the electronic energy varies smoothly as a function of the parameters defining nuclear configuration. For example, in a diatomic molecule, as the nuclear configuration changes, the internuclear distance changes and the electronic energy varies as a function of the internuclear separation as shown in the plot. This is akin to the electrons acting like springs connecting the nuclei. As the internuclear distances change, the energy stored in the springs also change. The energy of the electrons, in effect, becomes potential energy for the nuclear motion. Hence, Schrodinger equation for the nuclear motion can be written like this. The variables in the nuclear Schrodinger equation are only the nuclear coordinates and the energy eigenvalue here is the total energy of the molecule, which does not depend on any coordinates. The molecular wave function under born oppenheimer approximation thus is adequately expressed as the product of the electronic and nuclear wave functions, which was proven by the mathematical treatment of Born and Oppenheimer in 1927 that became Oppenheimer's most cited scientific work.